So, okay. So we'll start with Kevin Lannister. So at the end of Dance with Dragons, I mean, talk about total change uh, from <laughs> from the show, because in the show, Kevin is one of the ones that's blown up in the Sept of Baylor. Kevin Lannister also in the books is way more important than he is in the show, like almost a totally different character where once Tywin kind of dies, he steps in and he is this patriarchal overseer of the family and he's really the one making a lot of decisions yes. and he's doing a lot of great political maneuvering, I think really to set House Lannister up. And honestly, he might be, I guess, the 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 figure to look at all he's there's all these political moves that he was planning on making before he dies. Like you see that in the in the he's in the epilogue, right? Of a dance with dragons, and then Varys ultimately kills him. But he's he's thinking about, well, you know, um, uh, uh, who was it as that we were talking about last week that he he was planning on bringing back the um, Merryweathers, right? Hey, we, oh we yeah, bring, yeah, exactly, bring yeah. them back. Orton. Yeah, Orton Merryweather. Or, yeah, all of these all of these uh, figures he could they we could bring back, and then he's killed. Yeah. So now Cersei has lost another sort of key Lannister figure that's running the show. And it feels like everything. So all of that weight is about to fall on her after she's just come back. <laughs> so Cersei's yeah. like Cersei's going to be like probably the most exciting to talk about. But um, so just th thoughts. We'll start with you, Nikki, uh, since you're the guest. Like, what do we like? What do you think the fallout sort of of oh. Heaven's death is is going to be? Do you know what? Part of me thinks that Cersei is going to enjoy it because. Mm -hmm. So, um, what, let me try and get my timing right. So, Joffrey dies. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Then we lose Tywin. And she asks Jamie to be Tommen's hand. And mm -hmm. Jamie refuses. She then goes to Kevin. Like it's the best idea that she's ever had. And of course, mm -hmm. I would come straight to you, Kevin. Mm -hmm. And Kevin's response is no, because I know you've asked Jamie mm -hmm. and they have this, this back and forth. And eventually he agrees on the condition that Cersei goes back to Casterly Rock. And it's pretty much says to her, you did such a bad job with Joffrey. You can't stay here. I cannot trust you to keep an eye over Tom. And so I will become Tommen's regent. You need to leave. And she doesn't do it. So I think after everything that's happened with the Faith Militant, Cersei's going to be terrified that Kevin's... Co so Kevin's come back to clean up her mess, basically. I think in her mind, she'll be panicking, okay, well, what's Kevin going to do to me? I think if you remove him, I think Cersei is going to see that as an opportunity to take power back for herself. She's She's got no sort of hindsight, bless her. Everything mm -hmm. she does is just a mistake. <laughs> So, right. yeah, um, I'm not sure how she's going to spin it because I think Varys' intention was to either make it look like it was Tyrion to either wind up Cersei or have the Tyrells think it was Cersei herself. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. I, um, I'll be interested to see how Cersei takes that one, but I think she'll, she'll use that as an opportunity to kind of get her power back. Yeah. That's my opinion. I don't know what you guys Go think. Ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that, I think that's interesting that she that she would think that. And and that's a great little recap, by the way, too, because it's this whole um, it is a mess. She's absolutely, you know, created this mess and she, she does want just her brother there and the whole thing. And it's, it's you know, then he goes off and does his thing. At first, Kevin's like he's got to get his house in order and help uh, uh, Lancel out. And then, you know, once Cersei is, is taken, yeah, we got to go back and um, make, make things right. So that's a really, really interesting point you know it kind of does matt said we would maybe drift into the show but i i almost wonder if it does catapult her into like well there's no one to check her you know what i mean there's really right like and actually it's what varus wants anyways which is chaos cersei right. is gay like just let her let she is already doing exactly what varus wants and yeah. it's almost one of the reasons why varus sort of hints at the idea that he like he likes to you know he, he helps Tyrion once Tyrion gets in uh, I wonder if there's actually more to to the whole uh, how Tywin and everyone knew about him bringing Shay in because again, Varys is seemingly friendly, but Tyrion provides too much stability. He's too like you know he's doing things the right way and and makes sense, and so does Tywin. So that's not what Varys wants. Varys is like bragging at the end, and people debate whether or not this is uh, 
true or is he just i don't know he's he's bragging to to kevin isn't he about um aegon like he's he's like yes. talking about yeah young griff and all those things and so um i feel like this is this is what he what what he wants and so yeah so to nikki's point cersei will will gladly step in here and it's the crossbow like there's the, there's the bolt to the chest right um similar to what how tywin died i think isn't there a is there a lannister mark or, or not a, a, a tyrell I feel like there was something else planted and yeah. I have to go look it up that might indicate that it was someone else. Like there was Varys just the way this was conducted, um, I think is is to to point to various, you know, people that would create mistrust between Cersei and this person or more just paranoia about um Tyrion, maybe. Isn't yeah, because Kevin a... I'll go no oh, go ahead. Sorry. Isn't there a plant in um, Tyrion's cell after he's freed? Um, someone leaves a coin, one of the coins yep. that Olenna Tyrell carries around with her so that Cersei thinks, oh, yep. right, well, the Tyrells have done this to, to start you. that snowball. So, yeah, that would make sense if there was one with Kevin as well. Yeah, yeah, because uh, well, Vera says real quick as yeah. um, you know that he when he kills Kevin, he's you know he bears him no malice, but he cannot allow Kevin to undo Cersei's misrule. Yes. So it is, it is Varys, it is Varys saying to Kevin, he's like, look, Cersei's doing such a bad job, we can't have this. We can't mess this up. We can't. It's like, it's like we can't <laughs> yeah. mess this up, man. He's sabot she's sabotaging herself. Yeah, yeah, she's doing exactly what they what they want. Um. Because it is so it's one of those things where I always accuse what well, I don't accuse. I love George. George R. R. Martin is my I, I say, let him finish the books. But sometimes I see the story going outward. You know, I just keep seeing these threads just going out. This is one moment with the Kevin situation where if it is true and you we're getting a connection between Varys and Illyrio, and we're starting to understand their their plot and their scheme. It's starting to kind of bring things back together. And we're starting to, to get this idea that um this is what they want this is this is the path forward for uh young griff Aegon, what have you it's just to cause all of this all this chaos and there, there's all these supposed targaryen loyalist uh house dairy and so on who will be around ready to answer that call when young griff marches in there and, and takes over which is another thing we can talk about later but i think uh yeah the, the kevin situation is a big deal the other the other thing that's a big deal is Jamie's uh, proximity to King's Landing, the fact that he's not there. So it is just Cersei. You know, it's not like there's some other voice of reason who's there with her that's a family member. It's just she's all kind of bristled up uh, in terms of, like, protecting, you know, her her family. I mean, Ke even though Kevin kind of slights her here and there, that, that is, she, she would trust him more than she would trust the, this person or that person. So she does go to, I mean, approach him at one point. Um so now I think she's just going to be seeing, you know, I don't know, little Tyrions or uh, Tyrell plots all over the place. Yeah. So here's the, uh, so I, I, I got the, um, the, uh, there we go. The, book, the, the, the text, you know, the text pulled up here. So, right. So what happens, right, is it's kind of interesting because Varys comes in and he tells, he tells Kevin, <clears throat> um, you know, I thought the co the crossbow fitting. You shared so much with Lord Tywin. Why not that? Your niece will think the Tyrells had you murdered. Mayhaps, of course, that's mm -hmm. the word to let everyone know that you know that's lot. Uh, it's sort of a lie or anything. Um, with uh, the convenience of the imp, the Tyrells will suspect suspect her. Uh, someone somewhere will find a way to blame the Dornishman. Doubt. Division and mistrust will eat the very ground beneath your boy king, whilst Aegon raises his banner above Storm's End, and the lords of the realms gather around him. And then he goes into it being Aegon, Young Griff, Fagon, right? You want to get on that route too? Um, and then he tells him he's been he's been shaped for this this whole deal. Yeah, it's great. So yeah, yeah well so done, yeah, Barry. I man, well I done. <laughs> yeah. I know Varys. Varys is is much more developed in the in the sh in the books, obviously, than he is in the show, where he's just doing it for for the realm, right? Yeah. Um, uh, so okay.